Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to this edition of the Big East Rewind. I'm Chuck Everson from Villanova University, and my co-host, my point guard, the man that lights up a room just by walking into it, <laughs> fabulous Sonny Sparrow, ladies and gentlemen. Sonny Sparrow. Oh, Chuck, how, how are, are you, man? I'm good. You? On? Every, I'm good, man. I just, you know, it's, it's summertime. You know, we're out here... Uh, hanging out a little bit and take it, trying to take it easy. It's not, it's not always that way, but you know, we're, uh, you know, I have to right. ask you, you know, your namesake passed away this week. We, we you upset about, know. Uh, you know, uh, Sonny, uh, Sonny Corleone. Very hard. Santino Corleone is very hard, very tough. And Paulie Walnuts. It wasn't a good day for the, uh, the mafia guys. Not that they that place exists. You know, we know about that. So, so Chuck <laughs> outdoors, you want to talk about our little trip to city field for the concert? Yeah. Yeah. We, we, we got together and saw uh, the like the, it was like the eighties hair hair band night. It was, yeah, it was like Rock of Ages <laughs> on crutches. <laughs> Rock of Ages on crutches. Yeah, that's right. You know, so a little uh, a little crew, Def Leppard, Poison, and Joan Jett. So that Joan was a, Jett. that was a lot of fun. So we we've gotten to spend some time this summer so far, which has been nice. You know, not just uh, on the show. We're we're also friends off the show. So speaking of friends, Sonny, our guest today. We have one of my favorite Wildcats from the uh, the late uh, 2010s, you know, and uh, you know, as a national champion. He was uh, he was a guy that uh, one of you know, at the time he was the seventh player to score a thousand points and grab 900 boards in his career, and his class was the winningest class in the history of Villanova basketball. He was the center on the championship team in 2016. And the cool part about that, Sonny, was our guys were from the 85 team were very close with the guys from his team. And Dan and, Dan and I were texting throughout that whole time and, and going back and forth. It was really great to see them uh, I, I win know. that game. It's, it's a couple of big guys. I get it. I get it. Yeah, I, get I it, didn't man. even mention that. I, I get right. it. I get it. I, I didn't know even you're mention going. I know you're going with this. I know Listen, you're going. I, I'm gonna, Sonny, I'm going to tell you, and Dan, you can jump in. If you haven't guessed already, our, our guest today is Dan, the great Daniel Oshefu, Villanova legend, Daniel Oshefu, the chef. The How chef. are you, chef? How you doing? Can't complain. Can't complain. Thanks. Thanks for having me, fellas. Absolutely, man. So, you know, we have a thing, Sonny and I, that, you know, we go back and forth. Yeah, I don't think the big guys, Sonny, get any love during the season. See, okay? See this? You know, it's they, called, they, a, it's called a chip on away. his shoulder. Dan That's played it. with his back to the basket. He also was able to face up. You know, he was a yeah. hybrid, okay? Yeah. But, you know, guys like me and, uh, you know, and people that played around the time that I did at my size played, had to play, you had to play with your back to the basket. So the big guys don't get any love now. Those, the game the way it is today, I'd have to step out and shoot threes. Coach Massimino would have a heart attack. He wouldn't let me do that. Are you crazy? <laughs> so so hey, I try to yeah, show the man. big guys some love by bringing them on the show. Uh, I deal with this all the time. See, see what I do? That's see, see what I got to do? Just pass to the yeah. base a little bit more. Make your life I do. I did. I was a fast <laughs> point guard. Come on. Six, five point guard, chef, you know? So, Bad. so, so Dan, so you, so you were born in Maryland. Let's get, let's kick this off. You were born in Maryland yeah. and, and you wound up going to school in Westchester, Pennsylvania. How did that work yeah. out? Uh, I was at uh, the Sixers camp one summer up in the Poconos and uh, the head coach, Seth <laughs> Berger. He, he ventured out there. I mean, he was recruiting, scouting, whatever you want to call it. Saw me out there, and then I think uh, my parents came out, met him, saw the school. It was kind of like a done deal after they saw the campus. So it was uh, it was real easy. How old? Uh, how old were you when all that went on, Dan? Uh, how old was I? I was uh, like between. Two, I think I was at the camp around like 13, 14. And then I went to West Town at around 15. So I at believe. about 13, 14, you got to be over six foot tall, right? You got to be. Yeah, I'm like six, six now. Oh, uh, well, that yeah. had a lot to do with it. The guy saw you there. Yeah, you know? For sure. <laughs> and you six, can six. move, you know. Yeah, I can move a little bit. I remember he kept saying it was one play, like I blocked the shot and then I ran down and got a dunk. He was like, all right, this is kind of all in the seat. So... <laughs> <laughs> so up up until that point, you grew up in the Maryland area. Yeah, I was in Maryland uh, for like until fifth grade, I think, and I moved to Nigeria actually 
Oh, did for, you? Uh, three years. Yeah, I was out there for three years. And then that was uh, the summer. One, one of those summers when I came back for that Sixers camp. Wow. And then... That- and that's yeah. your heritage, you know. When every, you know, if those are mm-hmm. people that don't know, Dan's. Yeah, my dad is a Nigerian. My mom is from Cameroon. Cameroon, okay. Mm-hmm. So, wow. so let me. So when you went to Nigeria, right? You you, you said you're fifth grade, right? Mm-hmm. So you already probably had been introduced a little bit to basketball. Yeah, yeah I was. I was definitely playing. I played AAU, all that. Maybe like maybe so maybe third grade, one of the years. Best of time. So so what was it like in Nigeria? Was basketball present was it a big was it anywhere near what it's like here was it bigger? Uh, definitely not soccer was the main thing out there you know so basketball definitely was on the back burner i was lucky because my dad he uh he knew a bunch of people in the basketball world out there so i was still able to play uh and then also was playing at school but i was i was basically a soccer player really gotcha. I, the, I hung the shoes up for a little bit well maybe that's what gave you that great agility right yeah, definitely, definitely helped out with the footwork and all that for sure. I, I think there was another famous Nigerian, Sonny, that started out being a soccer player, and he 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 five slam a jam it all over us when we played. He did okay. <laughs> he did okay for himself. He, yeah. Akeem Olajuwon, he did okay, right? You know, not bad at all. Pretty pretty not good player. Pretty good footwork. Daniel had pretty good footwork. You know, yeah, I t- so. took some notes from the great right there for sure. Yeah, well, was that one of the guys you looked up to, Dan? Being that that oh, was yeah, definitely. Player? Yeah, definitely. And also, he was a big guy, real skilled, you know, always try to pick pick from his game. And uh, just watch a lot of his clips, knowing his history. Did you yeah. ever get to meet him or work out with him or anything? Uh, I haven't actually. My dad was trying to set that up a couple of times, but the basketball world, your your life and your schedule is so controlled, it's crazy to even think that you're going to get a chance to get out there. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, well, Sonny and I got to meet him up close, man. And believe me, it wasn't pleasant for either one of us, you know. I mean, you know, but it's funny, Dan, you know, and, and you know how it goes, you know. It, 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 well, maybe you don't, but man, man, when you were playing as a freshman, maybe. But we were playing in my freshman year, we we're playing him, and I got extended garbage time. So I told everybody I held Elijah Wan scoreless, but I don't tell everybody that I played him for about 45 seconds, Dan, you know. So that's what we, that's the, uh, that's the old Elijah one uh, thing. I held him scoreless. He's not, he can't be that good if I held him scoreless, you know? So see, see, see what I got. 40 dude. second clip. <laughs> hey, see what I'm doing? You? That's great. I like that. I'm going to use that Dan. 40 second clinic. That's it. That's what I did. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, so now you're in, you're at school in Westchester. Is that where you finished high school too? You, you went all your yeah, uh, all four years at West Town. Four years. And then uh, right over there to Villanova. It was cool because uh, I think cause I, I, I committed early my junior spring. Yeah, I was going to so ask you that. Villanova was right down the block. So I, I was going around in the springtime. I would go on campus to play pickup and work out with the team. And then on the weekend, sometimes hop up there, chill with the guys. So I was like real acclimated when I got up there. Yeah, so yeah you West had Chester's right there. Everything. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's cool. I, I, did it bother you being away from home like that, you know, in high school? Uh, not really, because uh, when I first, um, when my family first moved to Nigeria, I was still here in, in, uh, in uh, the oh. States. Yeah, because I had to finish some AAU stuff up. And then there was like a time period while they were there. I was here for like maybe a year. So I was kind of used to it. Yeah, it was kind of like, it's whatever. I was an independent kid. Wow. So, okay. So now, now your recruiting comes down to what you, you had it down to like Georgetown and Temple, right? Georgetown, Who are the other Temple, Nova, UNC, Texas. So you were interested in US in UNC. Yeah, how close, how close were you to going there? That, that would have been the interesting. Day, the day I, I committed to Nova, uh, Roy Williams was actually supposed to come down and uh, watch him work out. Yeah, so it was like kind of like rush, kind of rushed my uh, recruiting process. I feel like, but it definitely has some good choices on the list. So th- those of you that can't see, I want you all to know that Chuck is wearing a Carolina blue shirt. I know. Can you believe that? So I, I think we got that some, was we got some, we got some, we got some baby blue in our colors as well. That's right. I like to think of it like that. <laughs> you got an alternative jersey. That's you guys, great. man, you never stop. <laughs> You know what I mean? You can't just you see you see you how see us say, oh, the Roy, big cats take care of each other, Sonny. 
I see? got it. I got it. I got the fraternity, <laughs> man. That's all right. That's it. That's it. That's it. So, so, so now you got, you know, you got to talk with him down the road. I saw a picture of you recently on social media with, uh, with coach Williams and you were sporting a big fat championship ring. How did that come about? What, what was that meeting like? Uh, it was funny because we were walking out of the, uh, it was the final four. It was a switch of the games because UNC had the game after it. So we're walking by and he was walking down to the seats. So I was just, it was, we were literally just in passing. I was like, oh, coach, what's up? And I showed him the ring. I was like, oh, I got to get this picture. And he, he didn't, at first, he like blocked the ring. He wanted to get the ring in there. Antoine Jameson was over there like, yo, coach, get the ring out of there. That's funny. It was funny. Yeah, it was funny. Cool. You know, was at, cool you know at least he was, you know, it's a good sport. It was, in, it was all. Yeah, around. definitely. Yeah, definitely a good sport about it, for sure. Seemed yeah, like yeah. he was enjoying himself out there. Did you stay in contact with him in your four years at Nova at all? With um Jay? No, with uh, Coach. 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 Roy. Coach Williams. Oh, Roy, Roy Williams. I had no yeah. reason to. No. Yeah. I didn't. I don't. Uh, he was a he was a UNC guy. Was a Villanova guy. We take. He was trying to win championships. <laughs> right. Right. But you know, and you got the better of it too, right? Yeah, definitely. Thank God. So that's nice. And 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 any special exchanges after the game? Uh, no, not that I can remember. It's like it was, everything was a blur. I ran to yeah. uh, our trainer, Jeff uh, Jeff Pierce. I ran to him, and then kind of like don't even remember what happened after that. It was just no, there, up there, in the there air. Was, there, there was a lot of confetti. It was hard to see. I yeah, tell you that sound of the confetti right. was like gunshots. I was like, oh man, this is it's a lot. It, it was definitely a, a fun ride. Now, how far had you gone prior to that season in the in the tournament? Yeah. We hadn't even gotten out the first weekend uh, prior to that. I think we probably had yeah, we lost, either lost the first game or the second game. The first year, we lost to um, wow. UNC. Second year, first year, we were a 9 seed. UNC was an 8 seed. We lost to them. Second year, we were uh, either a 1 or a 2 seed. We lost to... UConn, they won a national championship. And then my junior year, we lost to... Uh, State, right? Yeah, NC State. We were one seed or two seed. Crazy. <laughs> that was tough. But yeah, yeah, that, was, that was a tough one. Yeah, that was a tough one. But like Chuck said, you guys were the winningest tradition in Nova history. Those oh, yeah, yeah. My team, yeah. So when I graduated, we were the winningest. And then when Josh... And Chris and Daryl graduated. They became the winning list. And then it kind of just continued year after year. The next class of graduates became the winning class, riding the, the wave of class of 2016. Yeah. So, so talk about when you get to campus. Now, campus, like you said, was right down the street from where you were. And your classmates were Ryan and who else was in your class? Oh, yeah, Pat. Henry at Farrell, right? And, and, and then Hank uh, Lowe. Lowe. And then uh, Kevin Rafferty came on uh, my junior year or sophomore year later uh -huh. on. Yeah. So pretty yeah. now, uh, and all, all, all those players stayed through their senior year, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you guys have to, are. you just have to have a bond that's unbreakable. Oh, yeah, for sure. The redemption class, you know, that's what, that's what, uh, that's what we're known as. It definitely take a lot of pride in turning things around. A little Bob Marley redemption song, huh? All right. Hey, did it. All right. we, before we got there, we're 13 and 19. Everybody said we're rebuilding. 20 wins, uh, get to the tournament, and then, you know, senior year, we take care of business as we should. Start the wave. You know, you, you mentioned you mentioned the NC State game, Chef. You know, the that game, Coach took so much heat for that game you know and i was around him uh in the summertime with coach massimino and i were in his office and he was getting interviewed by the guys at uh, bu sports you know all the all the social media yeah. guys. and it was it was unbelievable to the point where coach mass jumped in you know and uh it was a funny uh transaction between those guys but you know what did coach talk about going into the following season 
after that loss? Did he mention it at all? Did he use that as as kind of like to get you guys amped up? Or was that already that was already brewing amongst the, the 14 or 15 of you, right? Because uh, I mean, you know, we you didn't, came we didn't that really talk loss. about it. Because Ray didn't, he didn't really uh he didn't really used to talk about the um NC State game that year, to be honest. Yeah. He really yeah, we really used to bring that up because like I feel like it's just kind of like, yeah, it's just, we had a bad night, honestly, you know, everything, yeah. missing layups, missing threes, and then at the end, we tried to win it. Yeah, it was a jumper at the end, playing. rolled in, yeah. rolled out, you know. Exactly, you know, yeah. so it was like, kind of like, just get back for next year and try and take care of business. We, we, I mean, it's crazy because you're not like, we're talking about, you know, winning the national championship throughout the whole year or trying to win the Big East tournament throughout the year. It's just like, trying to be the best team we could be by the end of the season. You know, when you came in as a freshman, you were playing behind uh, um, Roof, right? I mean, yeah, Roof and uh, talk Mo. About, talk about, um, tell us about what kind of influence he had on you because the culture is, and everybody knows this now, especially, you know, when, when on our show, if people realize that the older guys teach the younger guys. What were some of the things that he taught you and what did you pick up on and what did you use in your career? Chuck, Chuck uh, just say his yeah. name one more time. I don't think we got his name. What are you saying? <laughs> Mut- I can't even pronounce it. Mut- Maruf. We used to call him Roof. I know Uf-tow that. Uf-tow 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 Yaru. Uf-tow Yaru. Uf-tow Yaru. Okay. Yeah, yeah, Uf-tow yeah, that's uh, I was definitely a big, uh, a big part of my uh, development early on. Uh, I mean, just to start off, because Wright made me his roommate uh, in summer. And uh, I think we were roommates on the road too. But, um, you know, in the summertime early on, just seeing how he was working as a senior, uh, preparing to uh, become a professional and uh, how physical he was also too, just uh, having to deal with that every day was, it was bothersome to be honest. I, I wasn't that strong compared to him. Yeah. And, you know, you know after, I, after a year of doing that, I think that's why I was able to hold down the date uh, as well as I did because, I would have to bang against him every day in practice. And he, apart from him, and at, at the time, it was uh, Steven Adams that was the strongest dude that I think I ever played at the time. So Mufi Aru so, was definitely a big part of my development. So sure. talk about, I want to ask you about your, your strength trainer at Villanova. Because I had gone to a couple of Jay's um, coaching clinics, and it was always usually the first day of practice. And, and over a couple of years, he, he started to introduce to us as high school coaches his training, and some of it was ACL strengthening and training. Like, it really was, I thought, very innovative. How, how did that weave into your education in your four years? Oh, it was real, it was real good at first because when I started off, that was Shaq's first year. So, you know, Coach Wright really gave him a lot of freedom to be creative and, uh, you know, try, try and transition because he was coming from football. So he was transitioning to being a basketball guy. And it was kind of like his, uh, that was basically his trial year. And he did a real good job. And then over the years, just watching the progression uh, to what he is now, you know, it was big to have somebody just have you on a certain, have the whole team on a, certain uh regimen and player by player too like you call it, we had we had the fat boys club for the guys that had a high body weight and uh they need to keep their weight down and then guys like myself you know have a different type of regimen i used to work out alone because i was just on some different time and he had a different uh program for me and then even now too like a lot of the pros in the summertime they work out with Shaq. he has a lot of clients off campus as well that he works with, he's uh best in the business. I don't know, I honestly don't know who's doing it better than him. Because if you see how, by the way we play, you know, everybody's always surprised that we're able to keep up athletically, even though it seems like, oh, we play on the ground so much, et cetera, et cetera. But, you know, if you look over the years, we have super athletes, <laughs> you know, yeah. crazy athletes. And, and it's all facets, right? From diet to, you know, everything. And, and everything yeah. is, Everything is looked at. Coaches, uh, Coach Wright had, knew exactly uh, what you guys were eating every day. You know, here's the difference, right? We we'd come out of practice, and there'd be two cans of orange soda in my locker for after practice, and no way in the world yeah, that, that was happening. Touch, 
That wasn't happening. Yeah. Right. You, got, even you might a, have it in your room. Even like an orange crush. No. Eat something. Yeah, like orange yeah. crush, you know, or I green. remember on the road, oh. guys would have to sneak to Wawa. <laughs> when we stayed at the hotel, you had to sneak to Wawa to get some snacks or something. It's funny. I remember one time Chris and Daryl got caught by Coach Wright. It was <laughs> hilarious. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, diet, body weight. Hydration. The st- statue morning. of limitations are up. If you want to share the story, go right ahead. Nobody's going to get in trouble. <laughs> Nobody's going to get mean, damned up. It's funny because I think I was there too. I think I might have been in the, uh, I might have been in the Wawa and saw saw everything happening. And nobody, I mean, nobody really care about what I'm eating. I'm, my body fat's below 5%. I'm cool. So whatever snacks I got, I got out the way. But I think I'm pretty sure. Daryl, I saw Daryl trying to tell Chris, like, yo, don't buy the snacks. Coach Wright is here. And sure enough, they got caught <laughs> with some goodies in the bag. And you know, Chris, he, he's in the fat boys club. So he, it was a definite no-no for him. Yeah, I'm sure he heard about that, right? Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> he got yeah. some good some good laughs in. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, we, we, I've been down that road, you know. It's funny because it the, the styles between – Coach Mass and Coach Wright are very similar, but they're very different at the same time. Mm-hmm. I think, you know, because now what, what I was amazed at, and you know how we, we just show up at practice sometimes, right? And, you know, we come in and watch you guys and, you know, and, and, and he's talking about having a flush day where guys, guys wear, heart, you guys wore heart monitors, right? Was that mm-hmm. wore heart monitors? So, they, so he knows exactly how hard you're working. And he knows on a flush day, you only can go up to 50% or 55% of your capability. Yeah. You no, know? we, we had no, there was no such thing. Every day was full out, you know, but now, you know, coach mass could say to me, Hey, you're not working hard enough. And I'll say, you know, look at me, I'm sweating. You know, of course I'm working hard. Well, now Jay, Jay would just say, Hey, chef, you're not working hard. And you, you could say, Oh, I'm working hard. He goes, well, you're only at 70%. It says so right here on your heart line. You know? so I was like, there's no, there's no escaping, right? Yeah, it's crazy. You gotta, you gotta put in the work. Can't you can't even cheat yourself? <laughs> no, it there's a it, there's a lot of gadgets too that we didn't have, like those boots that you guys use after games. To yeah, those are big. The Normatec the yeah, recovery and boots. Tell every tell everybody what they do, Chef. Oh, it's basically the compression on your legs, or what if they have the upper body, the hips and hips too. It just like really compresses your legs, takes out the lactic acid, and uh, like you do it, you could do it for an hour, thirty minutes, fifteen minutes before a workout, after a game. Like, really doesn't matter. I used to sleep, fall asleep in it for like really? two, three hours. It is makes your legs feel amazing. And did everybody have their own set of these things? Yeah, everybody had them on the road in your room. Take care of it. Yeah. Yeah, they got they got the nicer ones now with the book bags. Crazy seeing seeing everything get better. <laughs> Technology, man, you know. Technology. Hold on. Mad at it. So talk about. Let me ask you about that. Let's talk about the run in 2016. What what what, what was your expectations in the beginning of the year? Uh, I mean, we really just always talked about being the best team we could be by the end of the year. You know, we never did we never did like goals or. Uh, you know, let's win the Big East tournament or, you know, let's get to the final four. It was just be the best team you could be by the end of the year and try and get better every day. So, yeah, it's kind of like, it's weird to talk about it because even though, even like through life, it's hard for me to like, people say, well, what are your goals? Like, like, it's just like trying to get better every day and be the best me I could be at the end, at the, when it's all said and done. It's kind of like it transferred through life too. So when people are talking about or ask about, uh, throughout the year, where we where we focus on is just like in Villanova basketball is just as chaotic as it ever as it always is, and we're just trying to win every single game, take every single game extremely seriously. Yeah, I mean he he definitely had a different way. He didn't use he didn't need things to motivate you guys, you know. And he you know just be the I've, I've heard him say it a million times in practice and even in games. Just be the best you can be. Yeah. Right? So, so that season, you know, take us through a little bit of the Big East that year and and into the Big East tournament. Like, who gave you guys fits? Who would who was the team? Uh, that? that season, uh, what's it called? Pro, uh, 
not Providence. Seton Hall, always, always oh, a good yeah. matchup. Oh, oh, only at their place, though, and in the Bees tournament. We get back to them. Providence, Providence, always a good matchup. Creighton probably was a good matchup that year. Uh, but as you know, we always, you know I mean, we took care of the Big East. We always give, we're giving guys the business out there. Uh, yeah. I think won a bit regular season, and then the tournament was crazy because actually in the regular season, I remember I got a, I had a concussion, and we had a stretch. Yeah. We played St. John's, Providence, and then somebody else, and we won all three of them without me. So that was kind of, that's when Daryl played real good. So we felt real good about that. And then at the end of the season, regular season, in practice, I tweaked my ankle heading into the Big East tournament. Right. So the Georgetown game, I played, like, basically hurt. Like, it was funny because me and Archie in the game went to one point. I think we're up by, like, 15, too. We're, like, going back and forth. He's like, yo, if you can't play, get out the fucking game, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, yo, like, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about, bro. Like, I'm playing, like, definitely not as calm as that. I was definitely barking. Um, and then the next game, we played – we played maybe Providence. I can't remember what we played. Probably Providence. Battle, we won the game. And then and it was the a Chris Dunn team, right? Chris, yeah, Chris, Chris Dunn, was on Dunn team. Ben Bentil. I think it was always a crazy game against them, too. So that's another team, Providence, yeah, for sure. And then um, in the final, we played in Seton Hall. This is kind of like a big, this is a big part of our of our whole story on the trip to the national championship because we ended up losing like at yeah. the at the last play. Uh Isaiah Whitehead hits the basket and then we don't win the tournament. And that also we don't get the number one seed because we were probably gonna get the I don't know if it was the number one overall, but we we're gonna be a one seed if we win the yeah. tournament. So now we're a two seed, we don't win the tournament, and then we're going into the uh, national championship. And in that game, it's funny, in the game against Seton Hall, I think the last play we had, Archie slipped on like near half court uh, when we were running cats or whatever play we were running. And it's funny because in the national championship, I remember, remember when I was mopping, uh, yeah. And the thing of it was, I was literally mopping that up because I saw the kid having a tough time. And I remember we lost the game because uh, Archie slipped in the Big East tournament. Ah, literally, okay. <laughs> it's crazy. I was got. We were gonna ask you because that was kind of a we're big getting deal. To it. <laughs> yeah, that was kind of a big deal. Uh, you know, at the time, yeah. you know, everybody's like, "What the hell is he doing?" You know. Yeah, literally and, uh, was knew the play. Yeah. Knew the play was going there. Literally saw. It. Archie, I literally remember in the Big East tournament, I remember seeing the the wet spot, and I was like, "All right, that ain't whatever. happening." And then, I guess I guess uh, seeing them somebody go over it, I was like, "All right, they got it, whatever." And then Archie yeah. was he he could have he would have had a, a clean look at it too, like a shot. And you know we know he you know he he had plenty of big shots, so that that was killer for me. I was like, "I'm gonna have to take I'm gonna have to take this in my own hands and get a little publicity for sure." Yeah, <laughs> you know, cause, I mean, it is a marketing play as well in the moment. You know, right. all cameras are on you. What are you doing? You got the thing. And Swiffer ended up sending my mom some stuff to the house. That was pretty. Is cool. that right? Yeah, wow. <laughs> we got a couple of Swiffers. You could get some nil money today, man. Yeah, hey. would have made some. Yeah, would have made some nice bread, right? <laughs> yep, yep, yep. A little short, oh, a little short. So, so you come out of the tournament, and and take us through the NCA, and then we'll. We'll get into uh, we'll get into the final four. Uh, yeah, so man, we was we was cruising through the through the first couple rounds, cruising. We beat Iowa. Oh no, we play Iowa first. I don't know who. No, we didn't play Iowa first. Play somebody else first. Beat them. Beat Iowa. It was that was supposed to be a oh is Villanova going to do the same thing as regular years uh, losing the first round because Iowa was pretty good. Took yeah. care of them like simply, simply. It's crazy. And then yeah. the next game was Miami. It was another one. Oh, is Villanova going to do this and that? Took care of them, 20 points. Well, they like were very baby. athletic, Miami, if I remember. Yeah, super right. athletic. Yeah, super. I remember my boy, I played with Sheldon Mack, our rookie season in the league. So, played against him. He was super athletic. They had uh, Tony Jerky. He plays in, in uh, Europe. 
a couple guys were pretty good. Took care of them. And then Kansas, that was a battle in the Elite Eight. Huge battle. It was a crazy game. That was kind of like when we when we beat them, I was like, all right, yeah, like we're right here. I don't care what anybody else is saying, like, we're right here. Like that's a great win right there. And uh every game was kind of like, you know, we were so locked into each other. And nobody was talking about, oh, let's let's get to the final four in the Kansas game. Like if we win this, we go into the final four. It's just basically like trying to be the best team we could be at the end of the game and yeah. executing the, the scout report. You you guys beat Oklahoma like they stole something. <laughs> yeah. They they all, they basically did because if, if early in the season in the Bahamas, when we had a lot of the young cats, you know, they didn't know how to really play. We got we got bounced by them. They beat us by like 15, 20. And, uh, you know, that definitely stung because you don't, with Villanova, we don't just get beat by 20 points by anybody. And that was a dash. We were all the way in Hawaii, Pearl Harbor, big deal. That was Fox, Pearl Harbor Day. Fox, I remember that. Yeah, yeah. Huge Fox Sports. We were playing in, the, like, in a closed, open outdoor gym. It was uh, pretty cool. But definitely getting beat like that stung. And then a lot of people don't know this. And uh, when we're warming up for the, uh, for the Oklahoma game in the final four, we're stretching, you know, like I'm, we're going towards half court, and then we hear some of their players barking at us, like literally barking at us, like "Hey, like this is, we're scared of them" type of thing, and that just right. that pissed me off so much, like on the inside. Oh. And I know, like it just, I know it did something to to my guys too, because the way we came out and fired them off it was crazy. I was like, yeah. "Crazy, man!" Yeah. Yeah, we could have was. Crazy. That was a record of some sort. Either they had yeah, the least amount sure. of points scored yeah, or the we, biggest uh, point differential. That was the big, yeah, biggest point differential in the final the four final ever. Four. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was ever. unbelievable. I want to go back. I want to go back for a second, Chef, to, to the game on Pearl Harbor Day. Was that game that game was played on like a battleship, right? Or something? Yeah, it was it was like a I don't know if it's I don't think it was a battleship, but it was on the base and it was kind of like it was like a it wasn't an indoor facility it was part part uh, outdoor like the top had a uh, open air and it was this one big fan that was running around it's hot yeah. as hell in there not too much uh, fan but it was cool it was a cool experience you know playing uh, you don't not a lot of people get to do that did it did it throw off your depth procession or, or anything like that when you're shooting the ball just, Nothing. we just got smacked, <laughs> just got smacked. Honest, buddy yeah, Hill yeah. Well, i'm not i wasn't out. looking to make an excuse i'm just saying yeah. <laughs> It didn't, it didn't better, hurt Buddy Hill, right? That perception was good in the uh, final four, you know? Yeah, it was. Yeah. Yeah. Buddy Hill came out, and then, you know, he's a, he's a, a whatchamacallit, all-American. He came out, had 12 quick ones, and then from there, it was kind of hard to just get back from there. Everybody was hot for them. Yeah. Crazy. It was it. But it was in like the final four, in the final four, our scouting report was lot was tied in on Buddy Hill. He had the lowest his lowest point scored ever in a college game. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Let's let's not talk about the other final four game in that thing, this Syracuse North Carolina. Let's leave that one out. Let's let's yeah. keep talking about Villanova. So, yeah. Like you know, I, I could talk about Villanova a lot. <laughs> it doesn't no get kidding. old, right, Jeff? <laughs> nah, it doesn't. <laughs> no, I know. Believe me, I know. So, so, so yeah, now, look behind him, Jeff. Look, look behind him. What do you think? <laughs> he knows. I, 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 hey, he signed the ball. It's right here. I got, I got <laughs> from all three, all three championship teams. Yes, there. Sir, sir. So, um, so, so now we get in to uh, the arena for the final game. It's North Carolina. It's Villanova. I've got friends that played at North Carolina back in the day. I'm friends with the, uh, Mitch Kupchak, since I'm 10 years old, you know, he played at Carolina, you know, we walking in with him and he's talking to me. I'm talking to him. We're having some fun. And, and you got all of, I I think there might've been two guys missing from the 85 team. Like the whole team was there almost, you know? And the funny thing was chef, like people were asking us, do you really want these guys to win? Because you're the only team that ever won. I said, are you crazy? More than we wanted to win, we wanted you guys to win. I think right. 31 years was long enough, man. That's you know, let somebody right. else have some fun, you know. Right. But I gotta tell you, I, I don't know if we talked about this. I got I gotta tell you, because 
we're we're down there and and we're we're agonizing over every dribble every pass every turnover where you know guys are grabbing their head guy Connolly brown is standing on the chair leading the whole student section in cheers you know he's he you know i have video of it it's crazy you know it, it, it's just a madhouse and then and then when we get down to it you know page hits that wild circus shot Oh my and God. We all look at each other and we like got in a huddle too. Like you guys are in the huddle on the court. We're in the huddle in the stands. And like, <laughs> what are they going to do? What are they? I said, they're going to, I called it the Pittsburgh play when Scotty Reynolds went coast to coast and scored yeah. on that same exact play to put us in the final four in 2009, you know? And mm -hmm. I, I said, they got to run that. And then I see you come out with, with the mop, as you mentioned, the Swifter, you know? And I said, Oh, I, I said, we're going to get it. We're at least going to get a shot. We don't know if they're going to win. And then, you know, Chris does his thing and uh, the place goes crazy and we're hugging each other, jumping up and down like we like we just won. Dwayne McLean had a replaced hip, Chef, and he's two steps and over the uh, over the press table, there are yeah. guys sitting there typing their stuff and he jumped over their heads and was on the court with you guys celebrating as soon as it was over, like. The confetti hadn't even fallen yet. And he was already on the court. <laughs> you know? That was great. It, it was it was it was a lot a lot of fun. But take us yeah. take us through that that take us through that uh, that end of the game. You know, everybody's heard the story a few times, but but tell us, you know, from your vantage point, you know, you guys all knew what was going to happen, right? In the huddle when you yeah. got there. Yeah, we knew to play, and uh, you know, a lot of people definitely, I mean, find it hard to believe, but. It was it was we were real we were real calm in there. Like there was no panic. There was no uh it wasn't hectic. It wasn't like Coach Wright was literally it was like we were in practice and had how we, we literally have practiced how we want to go and sit into the huddle coming out of pra of uh, of the game. Like if really? Coach Wright calls a practice here, yeah, we literally have the managers, every coaches, everybody literally <laughs> practiced that in practice before. So it was like this Go go in the huddle, do our thing. And funny enough, uh, the only thing that changed was I we I've literally never seen the option to pitch back to Chris to practice. Like every time either Archie gets the shot or we get the shot off the uh curl uh from Arch with that was between Booth and uh Hart. But yeah, yeah Chris was wide open, pissed it off, bang, game yeah, over. He said on numerous play in numerous places, he said that he knew he would be open because they weren't guarding the inbounder. So and they let him they let great. him they basically let him catch the ball in rhythm, right? I mean that's, it was one two one. IQ, yeah. Because yeah. nobody was guarding him. And uh, I, you know. I give Arch a lot of credit because he could have been selfish and said, Hey, I want the glory, I'm gonna take the shot. Oh, and yeah, for sure. You know, Archie right, it was definitely the right play. Archie could have definitely got a, a a decent look off, you know, and nobody would have been, nobody would have been mad at him at all. No, but no, to get that thing off to the wide open shooter was but very what, what big. People don't realize, Chef, and tell me if I'm wrong. What people don't realize, he made that flip, and then he ran and dumped yeah. under, and he ran a in front screen. of Chris to kind of give him a little extra screen, right? Yep, yep, yep. How, that's what a basketball smart play that was. I mean, basketball you know, IQ. Yeah, I, I, I got to ask you a question about mindset, right? Because you guys went up three, and now Carolina, I think, called timeout. They had the ball, and, and they come up. And, and, right, the defense, your defense is set. Don't foul, right, no threes. And he hits that running double clutch, double leg kick three near the hash mark. Crazy. Yeah. And because yeah. so you're so you're got to be thinking, okay, redemption, we got this game. We don't foul. Best they can get is two. We run the clock out or we hit a foul shot. He hits that three because I being there, the momentum changed. It That's was everybody says it, it was your game. And then all of a sudden it was like, oh, this is going. We were, we were up 10 with about, I think. I don't want to say a minute, but either three minutes or a minute left. We we're up 10. So right. like we, we, we really fumbled the lead. Like it was kind of I was like. You know, if there is any type of panic, any moment, it was in those moments when we were, when we were trickling down. But then, when it was a close game again, it's kind of like, all right, this is this is where we live. Like we're comfortable here. Wow. Yeah. I mean, 
you know, and then and then the reaction of everybody was was really fun to watch. You know, you know, Chris just stood there with his arms up, like, and just let everybody. He kind of absorbed all of that. He let everybody uh, jump on him, and he took all of that in. Coach just turned and walked away like nothing happened, like nothing <laughs> yeah. happened. He just shrugged the shoulders. Okay, we won, and he went and shook Roy's dope. hand, and you know, it was crazy. You know, and and I've you know, listen. Coach Massimino was was a fiery Italian coach, you know, and was wore his emotions on his sleeve. It was a maniac. He was like a maniac after we won, you know. It, it was like he was like crazy. Was right, was smooth with it. I don't know if he yeah, planned I, for that. I don't that, know how but... he did that. I mean, I you know, yeah. it was it was it was wild, you know. So so now because because you know, and tell folks, you know, you guys were pretty much sequestered during the whole final four week. Oh yeah, yeah, we, definitely. You, you, know, you basically a saw the locker room, your your hotel room, the training room, you know, the dining room and the court, right? That's basically yeah, yeah. I remember yeah. after we after we won uh in the in, in Louisville, uh our pair, uh some of the what Mrs. Wright, she was telling Coach Wright that he's crazy because he didn't want to let us even see our families <laughs> after the game. <laughs> I know. You know it, and, and, and just so you have an idea, like when we did that, see, Coach Mass let us be kids a little bit. Like he, we went down to the horse farm and, you know, where, where Pet and Seattle Slough was one of the mo most famous thoroughbreds of all time and things like that. We were out, you know, I remember distinctly, and we talked about this on the show, is Ronnie Stewart, who played at um, St. John's, went to my high school with me. So, um, you know, D-Train and I went to their hotel to hang out over there to talk to those guys. That, I mean, and so you got to walk through crowds of, you know, I mean, but it's worse when you played because everybody's got a camera and a, and a, right. and a video and they, we didn't have yeah. to deal with all that. Thank goodness. But we, we got to go experience every bit of it, you know, and when it was time yeah. to play, you know, it was time. I didn't, to see, I didn't see any of Houston. <laughs> <laughs> no, nothing. I, you know, I could vouch for that. And then after you guys won, I thought the coolest thing was we're waiting for you guys to get back to the hotel and we're standing there and the door where you guys came like in the kitchen, like behind everything. Yeah, that? Uh, like the free so, elevator. Type yeah. Type. So the door cracked open a little bit and I'm with present. I see this big hand come out, Sonny, and it's chef. He grabs me by the arm and pulls me in so we could, you know, with Presley, so we could share a hug and, I yes, think we sir. got a selfie up with you uh, yes, with the sir. net around your neck, you know? So we got yes, to sir. celebrate a little bit with you guys, which was a lot of fun for all of us, man, you know? It was a great vibe, then, a great vibe. You, you know, it was, it, it was it, being at that game, other than a game that I played in, was the most exciting game I've ever been to in any sport, to see that like yeah. that. You know, and again, and, and having having been the only ones ever to do that, at school for 31 years, you know, and, you know, we, we couldn't wait to share it with somebody. I'm just glad it was you guys, you know? Sure. Yeah, love it. It was, I love it. Yeah. It was, it was, uh, it was, it was a pretty cool uh, moment, you know? Um, I, I would think too, another cool moment for you. I just watched it again today because Sonny and I are professional journalists, you know, so we do our due diligence, chef. We don't just show up here and, you know, wing it. It. you know, we don't wing it, you know? Yeah. We like don't it. <laughs> I watched. Uh, I got, I got I watched, notes. I watched you with uh, President Obama. Talk about what it was like to meet the president and oh, yeah, have him call real, you out. Real cool experience, you know. When uh, Obama call you calls you by your nickname in front of the whole world, that's extremely dope. But yeah. I wish we got the a little. I guess we got a little more time to uh, at least ask him a little question here and there because it was we were at the White House for like probably like four or five hours they had a couple oh, things really? set up yeah they had a couple things set up for us like met a couple a uh, bunch of villanovans in the political scene out there too and then had like a press conference a little cocktail thing and then we were waiting for uh for the president he came in shook all our hands then we had the uh press conference obviously makes sense because it's extremely busy but definitely wish we could have did they yeah, did they send you? Did you him. get anything from him like a, a like a photo? Did they send you a photo? Like when uh, we saw Reagan, they sent us a signed photo. Like he signed photos for nah, everybody. We ain't get we ain't get none of that. 
No, I got huh? my, I got my did picture you like, of Obama. Uh, did you go, like get like an ashtray or like a like a embroidered you know towel or something? I just got, I just, I just bullied my way to get the picture right next to him. <laughs> <laughs> listen, I, I have to point that out because you know, listen, Sonny, he learned from. I have to say, I know, I know, I know. I, know. I was know. in the right place all the time. That's when the camera was on, it You know, it was the reason I grabbed him up. It was the reason I remember too because uh, when we were set up. We were setting up. Archie asked me if he could switch spots to me. I was like, "Nah, hell cool, no." Bro. <laughs> I know I what you're doing. I got it, bro. <laughs> In fact, when I was watching it today, I said, "Look at this guy. He's standing right next to the president because he's getting in that photo, man. No matter yes, what, you know? it's gonna be me, baby." <laughs> and <laughs> not gonna be and anywhere security, as well, though. <laughs> the security getting in there was crazy, right, Chef? Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, they, they're no joke. Obviously, I mean. After we, because a couple of us had a press conference on one of the lawns, and like we coming back, we were trying to take like a little, do a little, one of the little viral videos we were trying to do, and all we heard was like, "Hey, get off the grass, guys!" And it was, really, it was secret, yeah, secret service, Listen, real serious. We, Sonny, I don't know if I told you this. We we go to the White House at, in '85, and. Uh, Guys forgot their ID. You needed you needed to show ID to get in. Wyatt Maker didn't have his ID. So he's, pull, he's pulling out, he's pulling out a game program. You see, it's me. Look, it's me. <laughs> he held the game program out. They were like laughing at him and let him in, you know. That's was, legit so, though. I mean, that's oh, it was that's legit. a picture ID. Yeah. It's a picture ID. You had to pull the you had to pull the game program out. So you're pulling cool. out your Sam's card. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So then Chef, tell us about now. Now, now you guys had it. Your parade was was predetermined and preset. It wasn't. It wasn't as soon as you, when we got back from Lexington, we were from the airport. We were in a flatbed truck and going down the streets of Philadelphia. You know, Damn. and yeah. there was and there was I don't know three hundred thousand people there at least. You know, and three hundred thousand. Uh, it was crazy. It was, it was it seemed like it. It, it. it was crazy, you know. And then I saw your parade, um, and that was a, a lot, you know. That was done a little bit, you know, with some planning and some preparation, yeah, yeah. just in case, right? Yeah, and I think was. I think they had a couple. They had gents and uh, and D train from the eighty five team that, that that led that parade off, you know, which was really cool of of Jay to include uh, the older guys to to yeah, be in definitely the had a. And all the classes. What was that? What was that like? I mean, that's something you see on TV as a kid when your favorite sports team wins something, right? Uh, yeah, that was definitely a, a very, very cool experience. You know, not undefeated. You know, you don't you don't experience those type of things. I think uh, for me, I probably it was cool, what cool was for me was when as soon as we got back to Houston from Houston, uh, there was a huge police escort from the airport, and the highway was shut down and people on the other side of the highway honking and waving a waving at us signs on the signs on the bridges and then we got back to campus and had like a mini parade there too and then it was a madhouse like literally had to run away from fans and like hide in the locker room crazy experience yeah um, what was the coolest thing that you guys got to do T talk about some of the things that you did after you guys won but what give me the top two or three coolest things that you got to do yeah. Oh no, we uh, we did the whole we did the, all the Philly sports teams like the the, uh, the Sixers, the, the Phillies. Me and Archie did the opening pitch. Uh, the hockey team, the team Flyers did them. We did the opening bell in New York. That was pretty cool. That was a cool, pretty cool one. Uh, oh, you did that cool. right? Okay, on uh, in yeah. Wall rang the bell. Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. That was pretty dope. You, and you did the uh, the ESPYs. You guys flew out for the ESPYs too, right? Yeah, I missed I missed the ESPYs because I think uh, I don't know why I missed it, but I did miss it. I think I was working out for the draft or something. Got to uh, got to ask SBs. you about what about your relationship with Jay Wright? He seems to be very connected to his players, past and present. What was your relationship like with him? Uh, we definitely had a real good relationship. Probably definitely better. Um, after and uh, during, it's crazy. It's the head coach is always button heads, but uh, I think uh, just as a uh, seeing just now that I'm looking back at things, just how I developed and how we uh, 
kind of adjusted to like me as a person because he had a we had a team of psychiatrists and we took like all these like personality tests so like he knew like I'm a guy that I, I enjoy a lot of this so if you want to get through to me like maybe you might not it might not be a lot of this maybe you might have to come and talk I might have to come and talk to you in your office and then I understand it, and then we don't do a lot of this on the court and then so I think uh just now as a man understanding that seeing how I move through life and then our interactions and conversations now is definitely just big uh just, just everything I did I, I, move through in life it's basically like how I play Villanova basketball. How you know on in the recruiting part, we talked about it a little bit, but how what was his role in your recruitment? Like did he come in like the Mariano Rivera and make the save and, and uh, the last guy to come in or uh, was, was, was Coach um, Nepp involved with your recruiting? Was Ash involved? Uh, how did it go? Coach Nepp wasn't involved. Ash wasn't there yet. It was um J- Jason Donnelly he oh, played a big part okay. in my yep, recruitment. Yep. And uh Doug West he was he was there a little bit. Oh, Dougie and, was uh, there, yeah. Chris Wallace as well. Oh, but okay. um, yeah, yeah. it was funny because I think Coach Wright he had a uh, it was one one day at school he came on campus and had lunch, like uh, in the lunchroom with us, like me, me and a bunch of my like friends. So that was kind of like a pretty pretty big deal, pretty cool, pretty cool thing at uh at West Town that happened, but. Villanova had it easy, I'll be honest, recruiting because I was right there in the backyard and it got on later on, uh, which was kind of like first, at first it was out of respect and then everything was kind of like making sense as far as me going there. And then, so is, uh, were you the first guy from your class to commit? Uh, nah, I actually committed after Archie. Archie did, right? Okay. Yeah, Archie was, he was early and then I was right after him. Okay, so that leads me into my next question. So talk about your relationship with Arch, you know, and how that developed. Now, as as freshmen, right, you know, everybody's learning. You had an advantage for being on campus prior to, you know, you were able to hang out because you were so close. But so was Ryan. I mean, Ryan was pretty close to school, too. So how did it work out? that he becomes captain of the team as a freshman and he's captain for four years. That's, that's almost unheard of. In, in See, his, his first year, I, I can't really say he was a official captain. I don't remember it like that. Cause we definitely had like Mufiaru who was a clear cut yep. uh, captain type of thing. Yeah. But um, for Archie, it was just real easy for him being a Villanova basketball player. That was just in his blood. You know, you never had to tell him to die for a loose ball. He was just going to, that's just natural for him. But um, me and him, we would definitely start off just, it's funny because our relationship didn't get really cool until senior year when we're in, uh, both of us are the two sole captains. And, you know, it's on our, it's on our shoulders for real. But as, as after senior year, obviously the bond of, being the captains of the redemption class, won the national championship. And then even when we were professionals, we got a chance to play with, play with each other uh, in uh, Chicago uh, when he was uh, when we were Windy City. He was yeah. killing out there for a little bit. So that's my guy right there. Always always had his back when people talk to it. The chatter is always, oh, Archie shouldn't be in the NBA. This is that, the third. But then, you know, I, I just always had to feel, just like with uh, Colin right now, it's like, it's a Villanova guard, man. You gotta have to put respect on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. You gotta put He's playing well it. too. Yeah. yeah. So Definitely. what? So what was your path after school? Was it the Wizards first? Spain, yeah. Japan. What? What happened? So the now? Wizards. I was with the Wizards uh, my first full season, undrafted. Um, stayed with the team the whole year. Never did it. Never, never did a day in the G League. Definitely uh, proud of myself for that. And then, <laughs> yeah. The next season, I was with the Wizards up, up until around like November, December. And then what happened was uh, somebody on my team got hurt and the way the contracts worked out because both of our contracts were unguaranteed. It would have been 2.5 million to cut him and then only 50,000 to cut me. And they needed the extra roster spot. So just literally get cut as a business doesn't 
signed with the Celtics, Exhibit 10, knowing that I'm about to get cut, and then play with their G League team, and then uh, start off in the G League in Maine that season, that year. And I did, got and from Maine, I got traded to Chicago. That's where me and Archie played together. Then I got traded to Reno. And then after that season, the Reno team got switched to Stockton, so like right by Sacramento. Yeah. So the next season after that, that was the 2017, 2018 season, I think. I was in, um, or 2018, 2019, years that blurred. I was in Sacramento for the full season, for the whole G League season. And then when the G League season ended in March, I went to Spain right after it for two months. Terrible experience in Spain. And then came back home for the summer, went to Japan for about eight to 10 months. And then COVID happened. And then took a year and a half off when COVID happened. Thought it was, I was done. And then I went to Korea to go play after that. And then Korea came back early, February 15th. And I've been, it's been an off season for me since then. Yeah. I mean, and you were doing well over there too, from what, you know. Oh, yeah, for sure. I, was, I didn't even know. I found out this was like last week, I was an honorable mention uh, in the league. So, pretty. Omari Spellman, he was a uh, second team. He's out there. He too, he was now, out Omar, there Omari out there. played in the same league as you. You got to play against him. Yeah, yeah, we played against how did him. That, how did that work out? It was dope. He's, he's out there torching. He gave one game, the first game. It was funny because he got out there, big, big, uh, highly touted, big, big, big news about him. So he was killing, averaging like 35, and then he played us, only had nine. It was a big deal. It was funny, too, because I didn't even guard him. We put, a, put one of our Korean guys on him. It was a big deal. And then he started cooking from then on. It was always battles. I remember, he, he probably, if I had to guess, he definitely got the best of us because they beat us more times, and he probably scored more points. But... You beat, at least I got a couple wins, and I like that. And then seeing wow. my guy out there, being able to get outside with him a couple times, that was pretty fun. Well, that's cool. Yeah. You know, it's it's funny because I know there's a lot of trash talking amongst you guys on the 18 team, and the 16 <laughs> team. You know, which one was better? It really really doesn't matter because everybody <laughs> is there first, right, Sonny? You get it's always the first one. They wouldn't have been able to do that unless we set the blueprint. That's just my well, opinion. Yeah, I don't, my I don't really want to, I don't get into it too, too much. You know, people say I have a certain type of bias, but for here's me, it chance, is what it is. Man. At least, here's at least chance. you get to talk about it. That's your chance. Throw some about. arrows. Hey, I, all I know is I like 2016 a lot and the most out of all of us. I don't care. Sure you do. I, I, 1885. You know. And I'm expecting every player, apart from Phil Booth and maybe Mikhail Bridges, even though we might give it, Bridge is 18. I'm expecting everybody else to say the same at 18. But. Yeah, absolutely right. You're absolutely right. You know, and, you know, I think part of what made you guys so successful, like people don't know, maybe they do, but there's a blue team and a white team in practice. Your, your white team had four future pros on it. I don't yeah, know if you realize crazy. that. I mean, Dante, four pros on the white team. Eric, who else? Yes. Yeah. Insane. You had Dante, you had you had Tay, you had Eric, you had Mikhail. It was Mikhail. It was, oh yeah, yeah. And, uh, it was crazy. Somebody else. Yeah, yeah, we had a we had a lot of guys, a lot of talent, a lot of talent. Deep, you know, right? yeah, very deep. Josh. Well, listen, uh, it, you know, it. I, I really appreciate you coming out, then. You know, we're we're running up against. Sure. You. Thank you so much for coming out and sharing your story me. with me. And listen, I, you know, you and I have been friends. Uh, you know, since since you came in, and it. It's been really cool too to see, you know, we looked at you guys like, you know, where, you know, our, our nephews and stuff like that. That's how we looked at you guys. And we were so excited uh, for you, believe me, and still are, you know, uh, that you guys won at that time. And then, and then Jalen's crew in 18 went and did it again. So uh, couldn't have been prouder of you guys and uh, was very, very happy uh, at that time. So, and, you know, again, thanks a lot for joining us, man. We really appreciate, appreciate it. You coming out. Of course. Course. See you at Summer Jam. Me. I was telling yes, Sonny, sir. Couple we'll weeks. see you at Summer Jam. Couple of weeks. Yes, sir. We'll be right yep. there. All right, brother. All right, take it All right, man. You've been listening to the Big Peace. East Rewind with Sonny Spera and Chuck Everson. The Big East Rewind was produced and directed by Nick Chico Chorus and Daryl Gurney. 
Check us out on all things social media. Type in Big East Rewind on YouTube in the search bar. Put in Big East Rewind and all of our videos will come up. Check them out. We ask you to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. Thanks a lot for joining us. Have a great night.